talk about our parameters. So actually, if you're done this, then this is fine. This is pretty straightforward. But if you need a recap of what we talked about in our last lesson, let's do that now. We said, in order for us to talk about parameters, we have to have a rule in standard or vertex form. And our three parameters are these guys right here, A, H, and K. Each one of these three things does something to our parabola, but also in general it does something to any function, which we'll, you know you talk about more next year. So let's talk about maybe K first. As you increase the value of K, give me a second. As you increase the value of K, you're going to move your parabola up. As you decrease the value of k, you're going to move your parabola down. Now, I'm going to put a little plus and minus here. I'm not saying that if it's positive, you move it up. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you increase it, move it up. If you decrease it, move it down. If you're h, as you increase it, you move it to the right. And as you decrease it, you move it to the left. Your a, as you increase it, you stretch it vertically. You make it taller. You pull it. As you decrease it, you shrink it vertically. And when you change the sign, you get a vertical reflection. So that's, in a nutshell, what all the parameters do without actually saying any words. So your parameters are H and K, and they all do something different. So remember, the A controls the curvature, H is side to side, K is up and down. So when you talk about this question right here, question A here, if we're going from F to G, because that's what it said, F to G. You're being asked to do two things, the changes to the parameters and the transformations. Make sure you understand the difference between the two. We talked about this in our lesson. The changes to the parameters are what's happening to your A, H, and K. The transformations are the physical things that's going on with your parabola, stretching and shrinking and right and left and all that stuff. So let's look at A together then. So to go from F to G, we can see two things that are going on with our A. To get from F to G, we had to make it wider. If we made it wider, that means we've decreased the absolute value of A. We've also had to change the direction because F was going down and G is opening upwards. So we've done two things. We've decreased the absolute value of A, which is a vertical shrink. And I've changed the sign of A, which is a vertical reflection. Of course, the order of this doesn't make a difference, but I will always do this in order of A, H, and K in priority, A, H, and K. So I've decreased the absolute value of A, vertical shrink. I don't know by how much, though, because I don't actually have any proper numbers on my grid, on my scale for my axes. So I can't really say by how much I've shrunk it. I can just say it is a vertical shrink. I've also changed the sign of A. That's my vertical reflection. So these guys over here on the left, these are the changes to my parameters. But on the right over here, these are the transformations. There's absolutely different ways of showing these changes to the parameters. But showing the transformations, there aren't a lot of other words that you can use. Please don't say uh, vertical, make it smaller. Well, no, it's a shrink. That's what the actual math term is. The only other word you can get away with would be compression. But don't just say shrink either, because we do want vertical. Yeah, but so what else could it be? It could be horizontal, which we talk about in our next chapter after the mid-year exam. So yes, your direction matters. We can also talk about the H. If you're going from F to G, you moved it to the left. That means we've decreased the H. And the vertex, we moved it down, which means you've decreased your K. So decrease your H and decrease your K. Translate left, translate down. So once again, on the left are the changes to the parameters. On the right are the transformations. If a question just asks you for transformations, then that's what you write. If you want to write that because it helps you, you're welcome to. But if you only need the transformations, just write that. Similarly, if the question just asks you for the parameter changes, then you just need that. If that perhaps helps you, then great. But you only really need that if it's just asking for changes to parameters. Sam, your hand was up earlier. OK, never mind. OK, that was question 1A. 1A, no numbers. B has numbers. Oh, some groans. I'll give that a try, please. F to G again. F to G. OK. Let's look at question B. So again, different ways of showing this. 
maybe you want to write this in words, maybe you want to show this uh, in, in pictures or diagrams or whatever. If you feel that drawing these will help you visualize it and then you'll understand it better, you're, you're welcome to do that. I'm not going to do that for question B. I'm not going to sketch or draw these out. But if you find that's useful for you, by all means. Let's talk about the A. I'm turning it from an 8 to a 20. We can clearly see we're increasing it. When you increase your A, that means you're stretching it vertically. The question is by how much are you stretching it? It's not by 12. Why 2.5? Someone said it over here. <laughs> yeah, so to turn an 8 to, into a 20 by multiplication, you have to multiply it by 2.5, 5 over 2. So if you don't know this, then maybe, yeah, you should write this down. If I want to figure out the change in A, I take my new A and divide it by the old A. That should make a lot of sense. 20 divided by 8 will give me my 2.5. However, for H and K, if I want to find the change in the H, I take my new H and subtract the old H. A lot of us know this intuitively. I don't even know why I'm writing this down, but some of us, yeah, it does help for sure. To figure out the change in K, we take the new K and subtract the old K. And if you're wondering how come you're adding, how come you're subtracting the H's and K's but not only dividing the A's? Because, well, as Ella pointed out, A is a multiplicative factor. So you have to multiply it. So the opposite of that would be the division. That's to figure out the change. Whereas H and K are additive changes, which means to figure out the difference, you're going to be subtracting them. Oh, you're always doing the inverse. So if you find that useful, by all means, if you don't need to write that down, you understand how to do that anyway, then that's fine. So we're going from an 8 to a 20, and so on and so on. So let's go ahead and figure this out together. Again, how you're showing this could be different. In class, I showed it one way. I'm going to show it slightly differently here. So for my A, my A went from an 8 to I'm increasing it to a 20, which gives me my vertical stretch of factor 5 over 2. Maybe instead of saying an 8 increasing to a 20, maybe you said increase by a factor of, you know, 2.5. Again, so it is the same thing. My H went from a 5 to a 3, not a negative 5 to a negative 3. Remember, the H is the inverse sign. H is a positive 5 going to a positive 3, which means we've decreased it by 2, so it translates left 2. My K went from a positive 1 to a positive 2. That means we're increasing it by 1, so we translate it up 1. Here's question B. If you find sketching this would be helpful, then by all means. I won't do that, but I will do that for C, just so we can visualize it afterwards. When Sam? Um, do we have to do uh, this way? Because, like, no, there's definitely different ways of doing this. Can you, you do it like the way that you did it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, So again, you can do it either the way I showed it in class, which would have been just said increase by one, or if you want to say a one turning into a two like that, that's fine. So either the way I showed it in the lesson or showing it here. I'm showing it different ways so that we can understand that there's a flexibility here, but there isn't flexibility in the transformations. You have to use those specific words. Yeah. Okay, question C. For some of us, C is going to be harder. For some of us, he's going to be easier. So we'll just leave that there. Give you a minute. The first concern is, uh, sorry, it might be, is that the way the rules are written may be the confusing part. We talked about the different ways of writing these rules back in lesson 2.4 and then over the course of the last three weeks we've gone back to that the idea that depending on how it's written you might need to convert it or you might need to just see this written differently this first rule f of x this is absolutely written in standard form we should recognize that and we should be able to tell what our h and k are but if you can't see it then maybe writing it like this is better for you if you see it written that way, then you can see exactly what all the hidden numbers are. When A hides, A is a 1. It's not a 0. If A was a 0, there's no problem. 
when h and k hide, they're zeros. So if you see it this way, you can see your a is negative 1, your h is negative 2, and your k is 0. If you need to write this out in an expanded form to help you visualize this, then by all means, put that down on a memory aid, please. G of x, I think g of x is more the concern. For some of you, you'll look at g of x and you'll say, oh, this is in general form. And you'll say it's the same thing as me saying this. x squared plus 0x minus 3, which is correct. It is in general form. The problem is general form doesn't give you parameters. General form gives you your a, b, and c. We want a, h, and k. h and k are not necessarily the same thing as b and c. So even though that this is in general form, I would suggest don't consider this in general form. This is a hybrid form. This is the same thing as standard form. In fact, let me show you the expanded version of it. It's the same thing. There's a hidden 1 right there. There's a hidden 0. That's your h. If you're wondering, sir, how come I'm subtracting 0? Why not add 0? It's the same thing. It's just a 0. And the minus 3 is your k. So a, h, and k. Some forms take on different forms at the same time. This is one of those scenarios where general form and standard form happen to be the same thing. So when you see it like this, now we can see what our parameters are going from and what they're turning into. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at this. Again, the order of this doesn't make a difference. I always tend to do a, then h, then k. My a is going from a negative one to a positive one. Maybe you said you change the sign of a. It's the same thing. You get a vertical reflection. The h went from a negative 2 to a 0. Maybe you said increase by 2. Okay, that means translate right 2. Your k went from 0 to negative 3. Or maybe you said you decreased it by 3. So translate down 3. So again, the parameters are on the left and the transformations are on the right. Before I finish with this question, though, I didn't do this for b, but I, will, I do actually want to do this for c. We all know how to graph a parabola. We talked about that in lesson 2.4. Get a whole bunch of dots from your table of values, connect the dots, and be done with it. But we also talked last week about how to sketch a parabola. We should be very, very comfortable sketching a parabola. It's not a required uh, skill, but it is really, really useful. So what I'll do is I'll actually I'll just quickly sketch parabolas f and g on the same grid so we can visualize it. You should be able to sketch a parabola from standard form very quickly without it really making any mistakes here. Again, sketch just means it's, it's representative. From function f, I can see my vertex is negative 2 and positive 0. Negative 2 and positive 0, or sorry, 0 is right there. There's my vertex. And I can see that my a is negative 1, which means it's my normal curvature, but opening downwards. So here's my parabola for f. We should be able to tell that very easily just by looking at the rule. It's virtually instant. In fact, I'm hoping that you don't even have to draw it. You can just picture it in your mind's eye. For the second parabola, for our function g of x, my h is 0, my k is negative 3. That puts my vertex right here at negative 3 on the y-axis. I can see my curvature is positive 1, so it's my normal curvature going upwards like this. Is it exactly like that? Is it skinny or is it narrow? It doesn't really change anything, but it is representative. So we should be able to sketch a parabola from standard form very quickly, very easily. I'm not saying graph it, even though we could graph it. I'm just saying sketch it. Uh, okay, let's do one more question two. This will be more or less a long answer type question. Number two. I'll give you a few minutes. If you're not sure where to start, before you stretch it or shrink it or do anything to it, you have your rule and currently it's in general form. General form is not very useful for us. General form doesn't give you the parameters. In fact, maybe let's have another little mini conversation about general form. Here's my general form right there. Let's just focus on this. Y is equal to 2x squared plus 4x plus 5. General form gives us an a, b, and c value. There's your a. It's 2. <clears throat> you don't have to recalculate it. It's 2. It's literally 2. It's the same a in every form, right? In general form, <clears throat> in standard form, and in factored form, the a that you get is the a. So please don't recalculate it. There's your a. 
you also have your B value right there. Your B value is four. Your B value is pretty much useless for us. The four doesn't really tell me anything. It doesn't tell me you have to move it left or right or up or down or stretch or shrink it. It is pretty much useless for us. If you care more about figuring out what does the B actually do, yeah, we could chat about that afterwards, but it's not fundamental part of this class. So in general form, the B value is useless. The C value, in this case, is five. The C value is not your K value. Please don't think C and K are the same thing. They're absolutely not. In very specific scenarios, they could be the same thing, but they're not here. It's not here. But we've talked about this twice before. We wrote this down actually down in our lesson once. What is the C value in the rule of a parabola? The initial value. The initial value. It's your y-intercept. If you don't know that, write that down. Is it useful? Eh. Eh. Do you really need a y-intercept all the time? Not really, but it could be useful. It's not as important as the vertex. It's not as important as the zeros, but at least it's a point. So your C value is your y-intercept. Do you really need that for this question? No, I just want to sort of remind us that that conversation about general form, you don't get a lot of information. So when you go back to this question, you think about, okay, the fact that I need to change it, that means you need to change general form into standard form, into vertex form. We talked about this. If I want to change it into vertex form, I need to find the vertex. That's lesson 2.5. So the question gives us general form. Your first goal, if you haven't figured it out, is to change it into vertex form. Find the vertex. Okay. So general form is given. Before we can stretch it and move it left and right and all that, we have to know what the parameters are, h and k. So let's talk about how to get the a, h, and k. The a is exactly what it is. We already said that. It's 2. We can see that. To get the h, our formula is negative b divided by 2a. That's less than 2.5. So your h is negative 1. To get your k, we would replace the h into the rule, and we get a k value of 3. So there's your a, h, and k. In fact, there is your standard form if you want to write standard form. So y is equal to 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 3. Do you actually have to write standard form? No, you don't have to. You just needed the 2, negative 1, and 3. For those of you that are completing the square, then you're, you're fine just by completing the square. So the question that's cut off at the top that I, I can't see anymore, it said, we're going to take this and stretch it by a factor, vertically stretch it by a factor of 3 over 2, translate left 2, and translate up 1. So we want to stretch it by a factor of 3 over 2. That means... To stretch it, we need to multiply it. But sir, didn't you say divide? No, no, the divide was to figure out the change. We know the change. We just need to figure out what the new one is. So I'm going to stretch it by a factor of 3 over 2. means I'm going to take my old A of 2, multiply it by 3 over 2 to get my new A, which is 3. Okay, so there's my new A. The question said I want to translate left Two, translate left two. So if my h was negative one, I want to translate it left. That means I'm going to decrease it. So I'm going to need to subtract two. So my new h is negative three. The question said I'm new. I'm translating up one. To translate up one means I'm going to take my k, which was three, and move it up one by increasing it. So add one, and then I get four. So this is my new rule. Y is equal to three times x plus three squared plus 4. This is what we now want to graph. Mm -hmm. so where can you find those, uh, Stickies? Mm -hmm. I ordered them online. So there is the original rule in standard form. We transformed it into our new rule, and that's what we're graphing. So we originally talked about graphing in lesson 2.4. Then we talked about graphing again after lesson 2.5, and again after lesson 2.6. A graph is not a sketch. A graph is as accurate as we can make it. So that's why I've got my little sticky note with graph paper. So if you don't know how to graph it, let's take one more kick of the can at this. Let's graph this together. To graph a parabola from standard form, we need the vertex. We can see our vertex here. 
is negative 3 and positive 4. Our h is negative 3, our k is positive 4. So negative 3, positive 4. On my axes, on my uh, graph, sorry, it's right there. There's negative 3, negative 4. That's my vertex. Some of you like graphing by finding the zeros. You're welcome to do that, but this parabola has no zeros. We can save ourselves some time. We know that our a is 3, which means our parabola opens up. So please don't waste your time trying to find zeros. There won't be any. So graphing using zeros is not going to be helpful for us. Okay, so we can't use the zeros. What else can we do? Well, we can get some other points. Tomorrow we'll talk more about curvature and how I can instantly graph this, but we'll save that for tomorrow. For now, let's go talk about what we did before. If I have my vertex, I just need a couple of more points. How can I get more points? I make myself a table of values. But instead of randomly choosing numbers here, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, I know that my vertex was at negative 3, and that gave me a y value of 4. So let's just pick a couple points right before or right after that. So I'll use negative 2 and negative 1. So I want to use negative 4 and negative 5. Okay, that's fine. So if I put negative 2 into my rule, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Times 3 is 3. Plus 4 is 7. If I put a negative 2 in, I get a 7 for the y. That gives me negative 2 and 7 is right there. That point has a twin brother on the other side because of symmetry. Let's get ourselves one more point. If I put negative 1 into my rule, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, 2 squared is 4, times 3 is 12, plus 4 is 16. Negative 1 should be at 16, that's way off my graph. There's no way I can fit negative 1, 16, so I'll leave that off. But my three points are enough, I can now graph my parabola using these three points. And I end up with my parabola right there. Definitely different than a sketch. My sketch for this parabola wouldn't have been as accurate, I would have just done this. Negative 3, 4 is somewhere around there-ish, and it's going to be upwards, making it skinnier. It's not bad. It's actually, it's not bad at all. But, it's identical. It's not, I wouldn't say it's identical. I think maybe because I already had that there, maybe my brain sort of just copied and pasted it. But I know that my vertex is going to be there, and I know it's going to be opening up, and I know it's going to be slightly skinnier than the normal one. That's it.